Is that good? Are we central? Uh, <laughs> yes. You start so straight. We they come into the same line Sorry. as me. Right. So you may have. Oh, well, should we say hello? So hello. Hello. <laughs> you might have seen part one of the Q and A on my channel. And the if other you day. haven't, go and see it because otherwise, a lot of what we discuss here won't make any sense. That's not true. <laughs> We're basically just finishing off the questions because I got loads of them. And I kind of saved some of the ones that I knew that both of us could answer. And I don't know if we'll be able to answer all of them, but we're trying our hard we'll try our hardest, yeah? Yes. So let's get straight into it. So let's find the first question. What if we answer the questions without saying the question out loud? <laughs> and then you can guess the questions and then <laughs> Right, the first question is from then dup 0209 Have you ever visited India? If not, would you like to? No and yes. Yeah. Next question. We really want to go to India. That's one of our top, yes. Your top ones. Your aunt and uncle went. Mm, just the other in week. January, February. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Whenever. And they were telling us about yeah. it at the wedding. It they said how, how amazing it was. One of my best friends at school was from Mumbai, and he always say, "Oh, you've got to come to Mumbai." And then I just kind of fell out of touch with him, um, and I haven't really spoken to him. But I always wanted to go. But then your other best friend, he's been a few times because of his u university degree. Yes, he has. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's, um, he did his dissertation on, if I remember rightly, something to do with cricket and social anthropology in India, because mm. it's such like a cultural thing in India. Yeah, he always used to rave about it, so, so it sounded like he had a good time. should go with him. Yeah. We should go, I'd love to go. That's actually one of our top places, I think, above and beyond is India and maybe even Sri Lanka. Yes, he went to Sri Lanka as well. I guess that's what he's doing for his PhD. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, we'd love to come. Kedo Lang, Kedo Lang, Kedo Lang. Was it expensive yeah. when you went to Thailand for three months? Mm. Well, we were in we're Thailand about, for one month. We were traveling for uh, around three months. It was about a month and a half in Thailand. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 about six weeks, you're right. The expensive part was the travel. Yeah, the flights. That was it, because we were hopping around a lot. Because we were, well, if we're in Asia, we're gonna go everywhere. So we went all over Cambodia, uh, Malaysia, Singapore, Bali. Mm. Those are the expensive bits. Because if we just, I reckon, if we just stayed in Thailand for three months, it would have been really cheap. Really affordable. Cheap, cheap, cheap accommodation, extra cheap food. Even like the flights were pretty cheap, and it came with, you know, we could take our bikes for free. Yeah. In the hold. Because at the time, we weren't like renting at home. We moved out, so we completely moved out. We didn't have any rent to pay at home, so we were basically just moving to Thailand temporarily. So the only yeah. money we were spending was on the rent there and the food there, and everything is so much cheaper. So the rent in Thailand was, I think it was 300 pounds for the time yeah. that we were there? Yeah, so that's like... 150 each for six weeks, right? Yeah, it's under 10 pounds a night. So cheap, and then the food, we'd eat out, like we'd literally eat out because it was cheaper to eat yeah. out than it would be we to start, eat When it. we went there, we went on a big shop and spent a silly amount of money. I thought mm. it was like 40 pounds we spent on shopping, and yeah. then we realised we were spending more money on shopping than it took to just go and eat a at a restaurant feast. down the road, yeah. <laughs> and we would eat so much food because we were cycling. Mm. So we would literally go out to eat and spend maybe <clears throat> max 10 pounds and eat like three or four dishes each. Yes. So it's really affordable. Highly recommend if you're thinking about quitting your job and going traveling, or if you're thinking about just going traveling for a short space of time, I would say that probably Southeast Asia is one of the cheapest places yeah. to go and do that. Because if you traveled around Europe, well, I mean, it's, it's really obviously expensive. for us in the UK, sure, it's cheap to get there, but then you're spending a lot more money when you're there. 100%. So, Our flights weren't even that bad. They were like 400 pounds each. Less than that. Was it? Yeah. Oh. Right, okay. Next question. Right, another, these are all travel related. I saved the travel ones for our channel because this is more like the travel channel. What other countries do you plan on exploring in the near future from Mango Witch? Countries. Mm. Um, 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 uh, you wanted to go to France. Paris. Mainly Paris. To visit our so, friend Cheryl and also because I've wanted to go to Paris since we met. I said to him mm. when like the first month we met, you need to take me to Paris and seven years later it's never happened. So you're just a pretty crap boyfriend. Shame. Shame. Oh, I hate you. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> we need to go to Paris this year, it's gonna happen. We really wanna to go to Mallorca, maybe, yeah. potentially happening. Potentially, yes. We'll see, watch this space. Yeah. There's loads of places we wanna go this year. I would love to, as we said, love to go to India. I'd may, we may maybe go back to Thailand, we want to, but also it's like there's so many places around the world yeah. we wanna visit. I'm not sure yet. I wanna to go to America really badly. Like, I literally wanna go everywhere. And he wants to go to Asia, and then to Australia, to Australia. America, and then to South America. 
the thing I think at the minute I'm really focused on this on YouTube and on kind of settling in and building a business and that is taking up a lot of our focus but once that's a bit more settled and we've got that kind of going um we want to travel more with it and um have this as our base to come back to so for now it will only be short trips but maybe yeah. maybe in the summer or later <laughs> later in the year we'll go on maybe a, a longer trip somewhere yeah we'll see that'd be nice so leslie hargett congratulations thank you what are your tips about not going stir crazy when working from home i find it challenging and lonely sometimes and it would be great to hear your thoughts this is a really good question because hmm. i know lots of people who are self-employed and work from home find it really difficult what do you think i mean it helps when you have someone else yeah we're together <laughs> yeah it was tough when we moved in yeah we had to adjust it was some of the shortest months of the year it's getting better now it's getting brighter and I, yeah, so that, when, that makes a difference. When you feel like you're only getting like seven or eight hours of daylight in a day, yeah. it, it does feel very, you feel very confined because um, you feel like you've got to work in the day and you never get time to go outside in the daylight and it's very weird. My tips, however... I would yeah. say that getting outside is important. That's, yeah, that's pretty much... In the daylight. So if that means like a lunch walk, if that means organising to meet a friend at lunch who maybe works where you near you that you can go and meet and so you feel a bit more involved. I would say also try and, if you're working from home and you're self-employed, try and build friendships within your community, within your business, within your, because recently I've started to make friends and me, I met up with two people recently, Blue and Emmy, and that was just really important to me because I've never, I haven't really done that in the UK. And um, I really can see myself building friendships now and in the sort of world that I work in. I, I'm one of those people though, I'm quite a, I like being by myself and I like working from home and I always have done when Alex used to have a job and I work from home by myself I did enjoy it I did go a little bit stir crazy because I had the added factor of living in Cornwall which is very isolating in the middle of nowhere yeah, here you can but here yeah. I think that if I was to be by myself and you weren't working from home I would be fine because I think that I just personally I quite enjoy yeah. it I'm, I'm in my own head a lot so I think the, th the thing about being self-employed is it sometimes it can be like the work never never stops, stops no, because doesn't. like if you're a nine-to-five job you go home on a Friday and that's well, it but uh, she didn't say that she was self-employed oh, she, she might not be self-employed it's just working, working from, from home. home okay getting outside get I, outside I find it best in the morning because if I didn't go yeah. in the morning I probably wouldn't give myself the time later you ain't on gone outside today in Alex no but get a hobby today. outside of work from home so i go to the gym every morning most mornings and that is my like it's the best part of the day for me because it means i can switch off i can listen to a podcast <clears throat> some of my favorite music i can feel mm. like a badass in the gym i can walk along the front and feel relaxed and it's just a really like a highlight of my day so get something that's going to make you feel really enjoy like enjoy a part of your day that um, gets you out the house. So next is from Linda M. Tate. We love you, Linda. You always comment on everything. You're <laughs> great. Um, how's Willow? I miss her fuzzy little face. So I guess because you miss her face, we'll put some cute pictures of Willow up on the screen. For those of you who have not met Willow, she is um, my dog, my parents' dog back in Cornwall and Alex has built up quite the, the love relationship, mm. love, loving relationship with her. You've fallen in love with Willow, haven't you? Yeah. We love Elmo and Midnight, our other dogs too. I don't. He does, he's kidding. <laughs> but Willow's a- She's the one with all the energy. She's super playful like Alex and um, you have a lot of fun. You know, mm. so it's really sad. I'm going back to Cornwall in a couple of weeks and Alex can't yeah. come. But you can- I'll just send you loads of Snapchats of Willow. Yeah. And um, yeah, I'll post her on Instagram and stuff. <laughs> What's your favorite recipe of all time from Clow Austin? Favorite recipe of all time? That's a difficult question. Mac and cheese. I was gonna say, our vegan mac and cheese is pretty darn good because it's affordable, it's quick, it's easy and it tastes really delicious. And it's like a comfort. It's the quick, the quick part I like. Yeah, the other one would fast. be the coconut lentil dal. Yeah. I really like that. Yeah, we used to make it with, We used to make it with chopped tomatoes. We make it with both. But no, I feel like I really prefer it with We've been recently milk. having, I've got yeah. both those recipes in my e-book, e the tomato based one, the coconut based one. Yeah. We use those both. I, I also feel like you guys like those two recipes the most as well, along with the hummus pasta. Because the most pictures I get from you guys is the lentil dal yeah. and the hummus pasta and the mac mm. and cheese. Mm. I think they're just, they're so easy and great. Right, this is a question I thought was good. Whitaker Leslie, 
Bit of a wild card, what camera would you recommend? I want to buy a second hand. I've accidentally been minimalist and low waist for ages. The camera on my phone is rubbish and I don't like spending too much on a phone if it doesn't need replacing. Well, you've well, done this recently. Yeah, but I didn't research cameras for photography. I researched it for videos. So well, I, so go, I go off of what you know, because maybe <clears throat> she's referring to video. Uh, you don't know. It could be. So what was I mean, your experience with buying a second hand camera? The second hand, this is the one we got was the G7X Mark II. Yep. Which Maddie also has. Yep. So we've got two of them. Both yeah. of them second hand. Oh no, this one's not second hand. that was actually new. We've... This was new, but it's it was off of our insurance from the one that I broke. Which was second Which was second hand. Yeah. The reason I went for this one is because it was a similar price. I was looking at the Panasonic one, which we were mm -hmm. filming at at the end of last year. What Panasonic? Which the one? The Panasonic LX15. Yeah. Well, I think it's called the LX10 in America. Okay. No idea why and the, the Sony RX100 series. They're the ones that lots of vloggers use. Yeah, I, I'd say that Sony, uh, that's probably the best one. Yeah, but it doesn't I have a flip screen. It has a flip screen, doesn't it? it doesn't have a touch screen. So they have flip, it doesn't have a flip screen? You've got, there's something sparkly in your hair that I thought I got rid of. It oh, is it? It's hair. the mascara. Uh, I have a mascara that <laughs> has bits of foil <laughs> that comes out of it and it goes um, everywhere. Sorry, someone came to the door. So I came to the window. Yeah. So trouble with it down like the ground floor flat. So I, I was looking at the Sony RX100 Mark V, but that was very expensive. Though it was way more expensive. Than but it was you could get cheap options on eBay. I don't know. I like this the best. It just had the most all-round, best quality for videos. And we have experience with it from me having it for ages. It's yeah. great. It's a great camera if you're looking for video and photo yeah. photographs because it's a great rounder. It does take excellent photos, but yes. I think I guess the. I'm pretty sure the Sony and Panasonic take 4K photos. Yeah. If that's your thing, so more resolution. But if you're after an SLR, um, you know more about this. The camera that I use for all my photographs on Instagram are either my iPhone, and <clears throat> iPhone cameras are bloody great. So are most smartphone cameras yeah. these days, but the iPhone camera on, I've got iPhone 7 Plus, is so good. But I also use uh, the cheapest Canon like SLR you can buy, I think. I got it years ago as a present. It's the 1200D and then I have a 50 millimeter 1.8 lens on it, which is really, really affordable. It's like a hundred pounds for the lens and the lens really makes a difference to the quality of the camera. That was brand new, that price. That, both of those were brand new. And, uh, but I know, I swear that, I think Blue mentioned that she's just got one second hand, the lens, but you can buy lenses and cameras like that on eBay easily second hand. Mm. I definitely recommend buying things second hand, tech second hand, because a lot of the time, there's nothing wrong with it, it's just somebody's upgraded. So they've used a the camera yeah. or it's sat around for a while and they've upgraded or they've just found they've not been using it. So just take the time and the patience to buy a secondhand item. I will always, I've, we've always done that. I've always done that. I've always been yeah. that way. Every camera lines. I researched around Christmas time just said, hi, uh, selling it, I don't use it. Selling yeah. it, I've upgraded. Yeah, like, and I've always been someone who bought secondhand. Sounds like you are too, if you're kind of like accidentally minimalist. So just take the patience and the time to do it and, um, depending on what camera. I just do your research as well, because everyone's really different. Some people love Canon, some people love Sony, some people love Nikon, Nikon. Some people love Panasonic. Mm. And you can actually go into some camera shops and they'll let you rent cameras for the day and you can try it out and see what you like. So that's another option. Maria Nananu. Maria Nananu. What are your best saving tips? Love from Costa Rica. That's so cool. I wanna go to Costa Rica. Me too. Um, saving tips. Do you have saving, <laughs> saving tips? Well, Buying second hand where you can. Yeah, second hand. If you've got a a big purchase. Yep. I've never found I've never bought a second hand thing that was bad or broken. No, you just um, you gotta be smart. Yeah, yeah, do research. Um <sighs> Right, uh we recently sat down because we wanted to save this year, it's a big thing for us is to budget and save. We sat down and wrote um a list of our incomings and our outgoings because we're self-employed and really looked at our budget and looked at what money we wanted to be spending what what things we wanted to be spending our money on so primarily that would be travel that would be food and that would be bills like you know rent and stuff like that but other than that the only money we, we decided we'd be spending on would be to replace things or to upgrade things to put back into our business so aside from that we're trying to be really strict and smart and not spend outside of that <coughs> and reduce the amount i mean we sometimes we eat out sometimes we go to the cinema but we don't do it a lot no. and i think that's a really good thing and a tip that i would have to save money is to sit down and evaluate what you want to be spending your money on in areas you can stop spending your money so much that was really helpful because it realized how much money we had to be 
creating each yeah. month. Our main outgoing was food. Yeah. Is food. We found it always helps when you write, like we write down a list of what we are going to make that week, for yeah, example. Yeah, meal prep. Um, meal and, plan. And even something as simple as a shopping list. Like loads of times I've just gone to the shop without a list and you just end up buying all sorts Too of much, stuff yeah. that you don't need. Meal prep, I find it really helps bring your food budget down because you know exactly what you need. And, and you're not like, I used to do it where I'd stock up on everything. I'd buy everything. I'd buy rice every week. I'd be, you know, you buy everything every week. So your pantries are always full. Try doing like a pantry challenge where you try and eat the food that's already in a cupboard. I'd like, we like to do that like once or twice a month where we do a shop, but it's a much smaller shop where we look in our pantry and say, what foods yeah. have been sitting here for a while? And then we try and eat it and make some recipes surrounding that. That's another tip. So yeah, just, um, do that. Do that. <laughs> Ari, Arena Helen. I swear I've said that question, her name before. Maybe she asked, oh, she did ask two questions. Oh, Arena Helen says, your videos make me happy. Discovered your channel a few weeks ago and haven't been watching since. Oh, thank you. How old are you and how old is Alex? I'm 26. I'm 25. But when but, do you turn 26? Oh, at some point in the future. This Friday. It's Alex's birthday, he's a month, you're a month younger than me, so you're my toy boy. 33 days. Yeah. Um, how long is it since you became vegetarian before you came? I think I answered that question on my you channel. You did, I yeah. remember you saying um, that. But how, let's ask how long have you been vegan and how long were you vegetarian before that? What year is it? What year is it? Has it been two years? Yeah. It's been two years, hasn't it? Has it? Yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah. Yeah, yeah two years. And then you were... <clears throat> Start of 2016, I think it was, I yeah. was vegan. And before that, I was like 99% vegetarian for 2015. Wait, you didn't get any meat in 2015, did you? I think I did once or twice. Did you? Yeah. Oh, really? When? Uh, once or twice at work. You didn't tell me that, or did you? I think I did. Oh, I don't remember that. You were like vegetarian, but <clears throat> not like, you weren't like, I'm a vegetarian. You were just kind of like, I eat vegetarian food. Yeah. And then you, but you predominantly ate vegan. When you were with me? Pretty much, yeah. Because I didn't, you didn't have any cheese or anything. Because I went vegan the year before Alex went, I went vegan in 2014. And then that, that year you ate mostly vegan with me, but you ate what you wanted when you were out about by yourself. Alex. Yes? What languages have you learned or do you master? Love from Berlin, from Steph Isley. Steph Isley. Steph Isley. <laughs> yeah. I have mastered many languages. Mastered. He's a master of language. Uh, well, I did French at school. When I did my A-levels, like final exams in the UK, before I went to university, I, it felt like I was pretty much fluent in French at that point. Yeah. And since then, it's gone downhill. I also learned a bit of Italian at university, so I can kind of understand it a bit, but I can't really remember how to speak it. You know how to read, because you need to, a lot of people don't know what you did at your, as your degree. My degree was in classics, which is, when I say that to people, they think it means like History. classical English literature. So they're like, oh, Shakespeare. Like, no, it's Latin and Greek. So yeah. it's stuff like- uh, Language. It's language, the but it was also- languages. Yeah, it was mainly reading stuff like, you know, the Iliad, the Odyssey. Uh, yeah, I can't even remember any others. <laughs> so I learned Latin and Greek. Um, I can't speak them. Everyone always asks that. You never learn to speak it really. But I did do first speaking at school in Greek. That was mm. quite fun. But it um, means that whenever we're out and yes, wherever in another country, Alex knows how to, or we see something in Italian or French or watch something in it, he knows how to read it and you pretty much understand what people are saying, which I think is so cool. So it was fun when we went to Quebec because I could understand He it. translated everything. He spoke to people in but French. Barely. But you, he yeah. is so hard on himself. If he went, you went to France, you would be fine. You'd be able to talk oh. to people in France and you'd be able to understand to, everything. We went to Brussels a few years ago and I got by then. I remember being in a taxi, very drunk. Yeah. And a very fateful night. We should tell that story sometime. Oh my God, we need to do um, some story times. Give this video a thumbs up <laughs> if you'd like some story times about yeah. our past life because I was a very different person a That'll few years ago. Yeah. Um, very different. I have some serious stories yeah. to tell. But this, I'll give you a quick overview. I got lost in Brussels one night. It must have been at 4 or 5 a.m. And I tried to walk home, but I didn't know where I was. And in the end, I had to get a taxi. Except that we lost each other. Yeah. Get a taxi and tell him in French where I wanted to go. And I somehow managed it. That's, I'm quite, quite proud of that. <laughs> and then we got locked out of our our friend's flat who we were staying with. Don't give and... it away. Don't give it away. Okay, we'll have to do a... Who wants to hear the rest of that story time? Right, maybe one more question. Okay, this is the question. 
that I thought was really funny and I thought Alex should answer. Okay. So Holly of New York, you wrote a really lovely long comment and I'm not gonna read all of it though, but the question um, was, you have a, this is directed at me, you have a serene nature and I'm wondering how you handle stressful situations. Do you have any tips on how to be calm and centered? I feel frazzled half the time and I don't like the funky vibes I'm giving off. I want to find my inner peace. And she says that she's given up caffeine, she drinks lots of water, she exercises every week, she eats a plant-based diet and um, she wants more meditative type mindful exercises. What ways do you calm yourself when you feel stressed to the max? I'd like Alex's perspective as well. So how would you describe me? Would you describe me as serene? <laughs> yes and no. Really? Yes. You can be very serene. I suppose. You're good at um, calming, staying calm. Better than I am, I'd say. Staying calm? Really? Well, yeah. Um, but also, at other times, you can freak out. Like, yes, I can. Depends what time of the month it is. <laughs> This is kind of a topic I, I actually want to do my own video on maybe one day because I think that because I'm on YouTube and when I'm on YouTube I'm talking about topics and I'm sitting down in front of a camera and I'm very calm and I'm talking about things that mean something to me. I can seem like I'm this really, I'm this person who's got it all together, I'm really serene, I'm really chilled out and it just isn't the case and maybe some people are like that. I'm definitely not like that. I get really wound up. I would say my biggest fault is that I get wound up and I get angry about things really quickly sometimes it's something that i've been working on for years and i think that i'm i'm figuring it out more and more as every year passes but i can easily freak out and i think that my biggest tip is to ground yourself and to remind yourself for me anyway what helps me when i get anxious when i get angry is to just come back down to earth and realize you're being ridiculous because most of the time i'm being ridiculous and to realize what you're grateful for, what, what, like just get some perspective and you're great at this. Alex often will give me perspective and he'll be like, Hey, what the hell? Why are you being so dramatic? And he'll give me some perspective on it. And I think that that is the main thing. And if you're feeling frazzled, maybe you need to start a gratefulness journal. I do that every morning. I write down something I'm grateful for. I have it in my bullet journal and I, every morning go outside, I look at the sea and that just makes me feel calm and serene and very happy because honestly, if I'm writing what I'm grateful for and then I'm going for a walk by the sea, what have I got to complain about? I'm extremely privileged and that helps me stay calm. And I think usually if there's something I'm feeling frazzled about or if there's something I'm getting really angry about, it's some, if it's something small, so if there's something little that you've done that I get angry and I like have a go at you for, it's normally because there's something deeper going on. There's maybe something else that you've said to me that's really deeply upset me, or that maybe there's something that's going on in my, I don't know, something like someone's commented online that's really upset me and I just needed to talk to you about it. Yeah. Or something I'm feeling the pressure mm. of. Mm. And it's usually, you need to figure that out and there's probably a deeper reason. Talk to that person if, if there's something you need to figure out together or talk to them and open up to them about what it is you're struggling with. And that normally, helps. So what's yeah. your perspective? My perspective. Because you're a totally. calmer person at, yeah. at, at, in temperament than I am. I'm, I'm quite like hyperactive. I'm a, I don't know, it doesn't come across maybe in videos. I'm a very <laughs> hyperactive, quite energetic, full of mm, person. If there's something playing on your mind, it's good to talk about. I'm the kind of person that can bottle a lot of things up yeah. and keep them from people. And then you'll only talk about it when I ask yeah. you. Yeah. I, and I kind of do that because it, it's, it's stressful. So I don't want to push that stress onto someone else. Um, very sweet. I'm just a really nice guy. But I, we, like, this is one of the things that we struggle with is that Alex won't tell me what's going on in his head and I have to like pull it out of him yeah. and then he'll do things that will upset me and it turns out it's just because he's upset about something else and he hasn't told me about it. So that's the, maybe we need to do a relationship video. <laughs> um, of a relationship I, I, advice I, video. A lot of it's the same as you, like, I, I, getting perspective of what's bothered me or upset me. Sometimes I, you can get upset by something earlier in the day and you don't even realize that that's what's just put you in a foul mood for the whole yeah. day. Sometimes I'll wake up in a bad mood because like the other day we had a big argument and I think one of the things that set it off was just there were builders outside our window yeah. drilling at yes. quarter to eight in the morning. Yeah, we're and, so fed up with And builders. I just couldn't shake the bad mood off for yeah. the whole day. It was bizarre. And then if you get perspective, you think, well, why am I so upset? But I mean, I know it's annoying, but there's no need to be annoyed by it later in the day. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's true. That's honestly the, 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 the truth. And um, if you want some meditative type mindful exercises, Use the app Headspace, that's wonderful for mm. uh, meditation. 
and um, also listening my my way of meditation is listening to really calm music there's some good playlists on spotify that you found mm -hmm. one called detox which i love yeah listen to calm music meditate yeah, go outside. some that are just like nature noises yeah like you put them you put your phone under your pillow like yeah at the weekend yeah. a few weeks ago and just play that yeah that was that was nice <laughs> yeah so i think that's the end of all the questions because i don't know how long this video is now but um Hope 20, that helped. 20 minutes. Hope that helped. I want to do these more. I think we need to do more live streams because I love doing live streams because it's like proper interacting yeah. with, with you guys. And so I think next week we should do a live stream, even on Instagram, yeah. on Instagram or YouTube or something because it's really fun. Yeah, I just remember last time we did it, it was like a bad webcam and it was dark. Yeah, it's because so YouTube horrible. is, we'll do it in the daytime, yeah. but YouTube is pretty terrible quality. For Maybe we should buy a little webcam, like a cheap one. That's better. No, 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 it's the YouTube quality. Oh, it is? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the questions and um, yeah, we'll probably do another one soon at some point because I really enjoy doing Q&As. They mm. are one of my favourite videos to film. I hope you enjoyed this lens Glad. reflection. Oh, what, from the window? Yeah, oh my god! Why didn't you take them off? Because... People can't see you. Oh no. Know. Well, they can see me. They just... you, next time you should I take them to off. Keep, if I look down like that, well, you no, don't need okay. to see anything, really, do you? Next no. time you should take or put your contact lenses in. It might scare people if I have my glasses off. Because you've got cute little eyes. Oh, don't say Alex has got kind eyes. Yeah. I remember that's the first thing I noticed about but I have little eyes. That's you why have I wear little glasses. Eyes, but they're really... Looks... But you've got beautiful eyes. I love them. Anyway, enough fawning over each other. Let's go. Go. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Oh. oh no wait wait wait, what are you wait. Doing? ah alex stop it no no